Hey kids, when living things evolve, it's almost always for the better. After all, the reason genes get passed down is because of the fact that they help the organism survive. Occasionally though, adaptations that might help an animal in general can become huge drawbacks in other ways. Today, we're going to talk about some inherited traits that can end up screwing certain animals over if they're not careful. First is sloths. So evolutionarily, life has found two distinct methods to handling survival on land. You got the plants and the fungi who just kind of hang out, and then you got the animals who actually, you know, do things. The sloth is the one member of the animal kingdom who was brave enough to say, alright, I made the wrong choice here. This whole mobility thing, way overrated. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm changing teams. The sloth sedentary lifestyle is made possible by the fact that the creature has the metabolism of the average college kid, sleeping 16 hours a day and only crapping like once a week. However, while this lifestyle is easily sustained on a diet of hot pockets and alcohol, it doesn't work as well when you eat nothing but leaves, which provide very little energy relative to volume. Because of this, you can have sloths who straight up kick the bucket just from being too Full. Their sad, slow sloth stomach spends so much energy over so much time trying to digest the matter that by the time they're able to start absorbing energy, they've already fallen out of the tree dead from exhaustion. I learned about this next thing from my Uncle Harvey back when I was eight. He said to me, Hey Sammy, did you know sharks die if they stop swimming? At first I was skeptical, because this was the same man that told me that the squirrel on the road was just taking a nap. Several firm prods with a stick proved to me otherwise, so by this point in time, I figured Uncle Harvey just had a generally poor grasp on the the concept of death. Apparently, though, he was right about the first thing. Some species of sharks, such as great whites and whale sharks, need to constantly move forward in order to push new water into their mouths and through their gills so that they don't suffocate. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you had to keep running to keep the kite in the air, only instead of a kite, it's your respiratory system, and instead of the kite falling down, you would choke to death on your own deflated organs. Anyway, this method of breathing is known as ram ventilation. Following this logic, one would think that rams would then breathe through something called shark ventilation, but no, apparently they just breathe like everybody else. Next we have ferrets. So in some cultures, ferrets are referred to as polecats, and there are two main theories as to why that is. Some biologists believe that the name is based on the fact that ferrets are an evolutionary hybrid of the pole and the cat, as evidenced by their shape and features. However, others believe that the name is actually an outdated piece of Nazi propaganda designed to show that Polish people are so dumb they don't know what a cat looks like. Nah, no, I'm just fucking with you guys. They're actually called polecats because of the old French word pole, meaning chicken, which comes from the fact that these guys would always break into farmers' hen houses back in the day. Back to the matter at hand, though, there is one critical difference between ferrets and cats. When a cat eats some weird household item, it can always just vomit or crap it out, problem solved. However, things get a little more complicated when your intestines are the size of shoelaces and your body is shaped like a sideways question mark. In fact, ferrets are probably the easiest to clog animals in the world. They can get blocked up and potentially die just from a few of its own hairs or a cherry pit or something getting lodged in their intestines. And it takes more than just a pipe cleaner to fix that kind of issue. Most ferret parrots have to take their pet to the hospital in the event of a blockage in order to have the obstruction removed through surgery. So unless you want to pay thousands of dollars in vet bills, make sure to keep an eye on your ferret so it doesn't end up killing itself on something random. How it feels to chew five gum. Help! I can't shit no more! Five gum. Stimulate your ferrets. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching.